Hello and welcome to a new Lua tutorial. Uh, in this one we are going to expand on what we learned about variables and are going to put them to a more practical use. So what I've constructed here is a little boss arena which uh, I want to use as a kind of playing ground for um, what we can do with uh, variables, how we can access uh, NPCs through Lua and how we can also access layers through Lua. I put a little uh, ceiling here out of bones onto the ceiling layer and what I'm going to now do is I'm going to go into the Lua code uh, where all I'm doing so far is uh, declaring a ceiling timer and getting a ceiling variable which is going to be a layer. Uh, Layer.get, uh, the layers aren't initialized until on start so uh, if we were to move this over here uh, we would just get nil but uh, by doing this on start, we can initialize it properly and get the layer object uh, when we need it. Uh, there's documentation for all classes on the wiki. Uh, I will have a link to them down below so that you can follow along without much issue uh, because the classes have more stuff to them than what I uh, discuss in this episode. Uh, right, so um, what I want to do with the ceiling is that I want to lower it uh, when the boss gets hit, uh, so I use the ce I want to use the ceiling timer uh, to keep track of for how long I want to lower it, and then once the timer hits zero again, I want to stop the ceiling from moving. So um, first, I want to check if ceiling dot speed y is not zero, then uh, ceiling timer is ceiling timer minus one. If ceiling timer is less than or equal to zero, uh, then we want to uh, set ceiling speed y to zero. But now we need to have something that makes ceiling speed y not zero and sets our ceiling timer. Uh, so for that we want to gain access to our boom boom so we know when he gets hurt. Um, this uh, needs to be done through um, a way to get all NPCs of that ID because uh, we don't have like individual tags we give to individual uh, NPCs uh, through Spabex. So uh, what we can do is we can get all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a for loop which uh, iterates over all the boom booms in our level so that we can access them all. Too. This is a very intimidating line. <laughs> I understand this. This is very complicated for uh, the stage. It looks really intimidating. So let me break down what happens here. Um, NPC.get is a function to get NPCs, of course. Uh, it gets, in this case, all NPC 15s in the player section. So all boom booms that are in the same section as the first player. Um, this then evaluates to a table containing all of them. So in the first index of the table is a boom boom, in the second index is a boom boom, if we had a second one. So, and the i pairs is just something that iterates over a table. <clears throat> so, um, uh, then we're going to go into the for loop and we have the variables index and npc. So the way this works is, if I extract this up here, I'll call boom booms is npc that get play that section and uh, boom booms oops you know if we like uh, this is the same line but now split into two and uh, the way this is structured is that um, npc is the same thing as um, is the same thing as boom booms at index index uh, because boom booms is a table uh, which just indexes from one down to however many boom booms we have and npc is like the value at that index which is a boom boom so to speak so <clears throat> now that we have access to like our boom booms we can uh, refer to the npc ai to see how it works if ai1 is 4 the uh, boom boom is registered as herding according to uh, our documents so uh, if npc AI1 is 4, then uh, we want to do something. Uh, we can check if ceiling timer is less than or equal to 0 and then set it to 50 and 
set ceiling dot speed y to one to make it move down. So let's uh, see uh, what that does. The, that's not the right program. So now I'm going to hit him, and the ceiling started lowering. Exactly what I want. Then I'm hit, gonna hit him again, and the ceiling is now very low, making the fight much harder than it used to be. And now I hit it the third time, and uh, since the Boom Boom was still alive for uh, that hit, uh, the ceiling lowered a third time again. <clears throat> so that's really cool. Uh, we can enhance the uh, otherwise so common Boom Boom boss fight with just a few lines of code and a, a little layer of ceiling that uh, comes down on you, which uh, is a really cool augmentation on that boss fight. And you can do even... Uh, crazier stuff if you are more creative than me because this is honestly very very uh, easy to set up and there are m so many things you can try out uh, it, such as like having the same setup but with like water coming out from below uh, periodically during the fight by just manipulating the layer speed uh, in your code or through an event and um, there's even more you can do even with just this setup so let's go um, let's augment this a little to um, have the ceiling uh, not go down on the last hit and have it go down a different amount depending on how much HP the Boom Boom has remaining. So what I want to do is I want to go to uh, the NPC class page, uh, which is linked down below, and I want to scroll down to um, the offsets, which uh, are like raw fields which we haven't converted to like this uh, easy access field mode here uh, because either we haven't come up with a name for them yet or they are so niche that uh, it felt like bloat for the time being. So what I'm looking for is the hit count which is uh, the amount of health a boss has remaining. This value like counts down um, and it uh, counts down depending on uh, what kind of damage you the boss takes. So a Boom Boom has 9 HP from the start and then uh, gets hit with 1 damage per fireball and 3 damage per jump. So um, if NPC AI is 4, uh, what I want to do here is I, may, I want to make a little variable hit count where I just access this value through the uh, npc colon m function which uh, just accesses the uh, memory offset for hp on the npc so now i have the hit count and if hit and hit count is greater than zero so that we do not uh, lower the ceiling further once the boom boom dies so since it goes down nine six uh, it goes it's gonna probably get hit on six and on three so um what we can do is like um, hit count times 10. It's gonna be the ceiling timer, and this is gonna be hit count uh, times 0 0.5 so that we don't have a super fast ceiling coming at us. I'm still probably gonna die, but the, the thing I'm going to demonstrate here is that now that was a very, very fast way to lower that, and now. Hold on, I misunderstood how it worked. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm dying. Um, I misunderstood how it worked. Um, hit, <laughs> hit count is the exact other way around. It's really unintuitive. Thanks, Redigit. So, uh, hit count, if it reaches 9, the boss dies. So, if it's less than 9, then uh, we want to do that and we want to uh, set the ceiling tower to maybe hit count times 10 and then uh, speed by 2 hit count times 0 0.2 so, <laughs> or 0 0.25 so that we don't get murdered. <laughs> oh, sorry for the coughing. But um, so it it's actually uh, gets hit at 3, so um, and then it's gonna get hit again at um, whatever the other value was 6. Cool. <laughs> This is the kind of stuff that can happen when you start getting wacky with your little code. Um, but yeah, uh, as you could see, uh, the skull moved a little bit faster on the second time, and it moved for a longer period of time the second time. Which, um, of course, is 
pretty neat. So one thing our code doesn't do yet, which uh, it probably ought to if we uh, were to like quantify this, uh, is it does not yet um, bode well with uh, multiple NPCs, mostly because um, our ceiling timer is uh, only really using useful by one NPC. So ideally we would uh, run that for each boom boom individually if we want to do something, but uh, for that I really want to like have a more useful application, which isn't uh, like a boss arena, but rather like something an NPC does innately. Um, so <clears throat> since this is uh, already a pretty long, I want to move that off into the next episode where we will look at uh, what many people dread, but which is really easy to use, and that is PNPC which is the first library we're going we're gonna to use in this tutorial series and which is going to allow us to make like variables that uh, persist with, e with each NPC individually and will allow us to make like custom NPCs in the future and uh, all kinds of cool stuff. I hope you learned something today and I'll see you in the next episode.